Your time will come, Diana, and everything will be different. What do you want to know about Wonder Woman 1984? The answer is always more. Then take a look behind the scenes with us. This long-anticipated Wonder Woman sequel has certainly kept fans waiting, giving us plenty of time to delve behind the scenes and learn all about the off-screen secrets. Wow, you're so funny. From filming techniques to the relationships on set, we're taking a close look at Wonder Woman 1984. However, what happened on this film blew my mind. 84 takes us back to the Isle of Themyscira to see a young Diana participating in the Amazonian Olympics. These sequences were shot in IMAX. It was very important to me to shoot this on film. I believe in it tremendously. Meaning special cameras and film had to be used. It's a grueling process that requires a 240 pound camera, or 109 kilograms, that uses spools that only hold three minutes of film. Reloading the film takes 20 minutes, but director Patty Jenkins called the experience mind-blowing, insisting that footage captured using IMAX looks better than any other format. Greatness is not what you think. Returning to the role of young Diana is Lily Aspel. Lily, born in 2007, received warm wishes from Patty Jenkins on her 13th birthday. Jenkins commemorated her special day with kind words and photos from the set of Wonder Woman 1984. The director is very supportive of Lily, taking any chance to encourage and congratulate her like when Mattel released a Barbie doll modeled after her. I can do it. Just do your best. In the Olympics scene, Lily does most of her own stunts. She trained for five months to prepare for the role. She still had to rely on a stunt double for some of them since she was only 10 years old at the time of filming. I forgot to tell you. What? Radar. Will they, will they shoot at us? Speaking of stunts, Patty Jenkins looked to 80s movies for inspiration for Wonder Woman 1984's stunts. She wanted huge 80s-style action sequences with as many practical effects and stunts as possible. She didn't want it to just look like an 80s movie. She wanted to film it like an 80s movie. This put a lot of demand on the actors. But according to Gal Gadot, who does many of her own stunts in the movie, says the effort and injuries were worth it. They will never find us. Chris Pine returns to play the mysteriously reappeared Steve Trevor. After the way Patty, Gal, and Chris hit it off in the first movie, Gadot claimed she couldn't imagine doing another one without him. By the way, Steve's fanny pack was his idea, and when asked, he admitted to keeping treats inside of it. Uh, that's just a trash can. It's just a trash can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The trio had such a strong camaraderie that Kristen Wiig and Pedro Pascal were actually nervous about walking into the already established friendship dynamics. Wait. We were terrified. <laughs> but luckily, they ended up being able to fit in immediately. Jenkins remarked that the mood on set was so much fun that it felt like I was making something with my friends from high school. The fact that Gal and Patty were already fans of the two probably helped. Life is good, but it can be better. All you need is to want. Pedro Pascal was actually nervous about doing the movie. He was intimidated by the massive success of the first Wonder Woman film. He was ultimately glad he accepted the role of Maxwell Lord, as evidenced by this fun Breakfast Club-inspired photo with the main cast and director that he posted to Instagram by accident while trying to apply a filter to it for personal use. Lucky for him, the photo didn't reveal any closely guarded DCU secrets, so he didn't end up getting in any trouble over it. No one's made me laugh like this in such a long time. Kristen Wiig and Gal Gadot became the best of friends off camera. The two shared an instant connection, according to Gal. Wig, usually a comedic actress, was facing a new challenge by taking the role of Barbara Minerva, aka the Cheetah. We're sure she was glad to have a friend like Gal, who she called a great scene partner. The two were able to switch between their off-screen friendship and on-screen rivalry with ease. Gal and I love each other. <laughs> She's brilliant. There were plenty of on-set friendships blossoming, and not just between the actors and the director. Gadot and Jenkins both had their families on set. Their husbands and children have all become close friends, making Wonder Woman 1984 sound like one big family behind the scenes. The world of Wonder Woman 1984 is one of excess. The film features iconic landmarks from the U.S. Capitol, like the Washington Monument, and several scenes were shot on location. All of Pennsylvania Avenue was shut down to film one of the film's epic action sequences, 
and there were scenes shot at the Watergate Hotel and in front of the National Archives. They even constructed a fake Commander Salamander in Georgetown for authenticity. This boutique was a staple of DC's retail scene for 34 years before closing shop in 2010. But the crew brought the storefront back just for the film. We find Diana in the wonderful, vivid, super cool um, 80s. The entire production went to great lengths to be faithful to the time period. Revlon provided makeup for the film, even reproducing the actual colors and shades they ran during the 80s. Jan Sewell, the makeup and hair designer for Wonder Woman 1984, praised the quality of the products and felt they were an important contribution to the film's authenticity. You don't get out? You know, it seemed like the kind of person who's like always out. One of the challenges they faced was finding a balance between staying true to the flashy fashion of the 80s without having a wardrobe that was too distracting. You look amazing. I'll take it. Many of the movie's outfits were lifted right out of the pages of magazines from the era, then altered to suit the film's needs. Diana's white dress was inspired by a dress from a Dior fashion show in 1984, and one of her more casual ensembles was taken from a 1986 Ralph Lauren ad featuring Brooke Shields. Parachute pants? Yeah. Um... Does, it, does everybody parachute now? The costume designer for Wonder Woman 1984 is Lindy Hemming, who also worked on the Christopher Nolan Batman trilogy. Diana's golden armor was designed to be worn in pieces, allowing for easier filming, less time spent on costume changes, and more comfort for Gal Gadot. At the end of the day, there's no two ways about it. Gal is my greatest creative partner on these films. Director Patty Jenkins was conflicted on how to release the film in the midst of a pandemic. She felt it was important for people to see Wonder Woman 1984 on the big screen, especially for the Amazonian Olympics sequences shot in IMAX. There's a quality to emulsive print filmmaking. It's like the highest level of a oil paint. Jenkins had been vocal in her support of movie theaters, saying, I don't think any of us want to live in a world where the only option is to take your kids to watch a movie in your own living room and not have a place to go for a date. Jenkins was willing to compromise with a simultaneous theatrical and home streaming release. If you had told me a year ago that we would ever go straight to streaming in any way, shape, or form, I would have flipped out. I'm very pro-theatrical release, and I will be that again as soon as this is over. However, this is such a crazy year. Have you ever been in love? A long, long time ago. Did you learn anything new? What's one of your favorite behind-the-scenes stories from a movie? Let us know in the comments. If you want to learn more about Wonder Woman, check out our video on the evolution of Wonder Woman on screen. If you love content like this, make sure you're subscribed and hit the like button.